let's start our preparation with endodontics so endodontics uh, we mainly study endodontics under these three main categories uh, the access opening biomechanical preparation obturation when it comes to the root canal treatment or the root canal procedure in specific but uh, the success of your endo practice totally depends upon diagnosis so diagnosis plays very important role uh, in your treatment planning and even in your treatment uh, if possible i'll take one more session on diagnosis in endodontics so uh, today we'll be exclusively dealing about access opening uh, the access opening is the first step in your endodontic treatment and i would say if you get your access right then everything will be right so uh, in order to have or create a very good endodontic access cavity you need to follow a set of guidelines the first thing is remove all the carious tooth structure the second thing is conserve the tooth structure as much as possible do not cut any sound dentin without any reason and completely deroofing the pulp chamber you need to completely deroof this pulp chamber and then removing the coronal pulpal tissue all the pulpal tissue should be removed and then identifying the canal orifices you need to have a very good knowledge of anatomy of the pulp chamber in order to do that we'll be studying in detail today and then achieving the straight line access having the straight line access is very important and critical uh, for a successful endodontic treatment uh, it, just in this case if you consider having st having straight line access doesn't mean having a straight line access to the canal orifice but it does mean having a straight line access to the canal if you had a uh, straight line access just to the canal then the file should have been uh, then you would have your file coming from somewhere this direction or this this direction so that would definitely go and perforate the root structure at some point of time what directs the instrument into the canal not the walls of the endodontic cavity these walls do not direct the instrument into the canal but these two walls of the canal or the root directs the instrument into the canal so uh, in this case you don't have a straight line access because of the shoulder over here so in this case what is happening is uh, the instrument is exiting its phone on the labial side but not on the link palatal side so uh, there is a lot of preparation on the labial side whereas there is where there is no preparation on the palatal side this will not be a successful endodontic treatment because you don't have sufficient preparation or you'll have a uh, lot of preparation than needed at the apex uh, here we have uh, ideal access cavities of all different tooth uh, so have a look at it you have rounded triangle in maxillary central incisor and ma mandibular molars you have dumbbell shaped in the maxillary premolars and then you'll have oval shape in the maxillary canines here we have a table showing the usual number of roots and usual number of root canals in different tooth so in case of incisors or uh, maxillary central and lateral we generally have uh, one root and one canal but in case of premolars we uh, mostly have two roots uh, with two canals and in case of second premolars we have uh, sometimes one sometimes two but in case of upper molars it's always three but we uh, the number of roots is always three uh, but the canals uh, might be four we will have a uh, mb2 canal or the mesial buccal two uh, in case of lower incisors now we generally have a single root but uh, uh, we'll have uh, two canals in most of the cases which will have two one configuration in case of canines we generally have uh, one root and one canal uh, in case of lower premolars we have one root and uh, possibly two canals in some cases in case of uh, lower molars we have two roots and uh, in most of the cases we have three canals but in some cases we'll have more than four or even five canals the most common difference we see is in mandibular first molar whereas we call it as radix intermolaris it means having an extra root uh, in the mandibular first molar uh it is again uh, divided into four different types according to the location of the root so uh, type a type b type c and ac as follows so again now uh, when we classify the type of canals uh, according to vitrusi uh, it is classified into eight types or uh, you know about this so i'm not discussing in detail and when it comes to wien's classification he classified the canal configuration into four different types okay 
the Krasner and Rankos laws make it easier for identification of the canals. So, <clears throat> the law of CEJ mentions that at the level of CEJ, when you consider a tooth structure at this level, at the level of CEJ, the distance from the external wall to the pulp chamber is almost same in all the directions. So, it says that this distance is almost same at the level of CEJ. When it comes to law of centrality, the floor of the pulp chamber is always located at the center of the tooth at the level of CEJ. This floor is always located at the center at CEJ. And then when it comes to law of concentricity, the wall of the pulp chamber is always concentric to the external surface of the tooth at the level of CEJ. These walls are always concentric to the external walls at CEJ. Okay. Next we have the law of symmetry 1 which is simple. It says that except for the maxillary molars uh, when, your dry, when your line is drawn mesiodistally bisecting the pulp chamber the canals are always located equidistant from this line. That is if there are two canals on the mesial side these two canals will be equidistant from this bisecting line. The law of symmetry 2 says that uh, the canals are always located perpendicular to the mesiodistal line drawn. When it comes to law of color change, you can always see that the floor of the pulp chamber is always darker than the <coughs> roof or walls of the pulp chamber. The law of orifice location 1 says that the orifices of the root canals are always located at the junction of the wall and the floor. These orifices are always at the junction of the wall and the floor. You can see every canal is placed at the junction of this wall and floor. The law of orifice location 2 says that the orifices of the root canals are located at right angles to the floor wall junction. So if this is the canal, this is the floor, these are located, these create a 90 degrees angle. This is law of orifice location 2, you can see here. Uh, the law of orifice location says that we will if you can see here we have this developmental fusion lines all the canals of a tooth are located at the end of these developmental fusion lines so this will be an identifying future for location of the root canals now you have seen the loss of uh, pulp chamber anatomy now you have seen the loss of pulp chamber anatomy and you know where to start with and you know how to search for canals now uh, you need to know the set of instruments that you need to have in order to start endo access cavity preparation. So you generally use number A, 2, 4, 6 uh, round burrs. You will have the tapered burr, you will have the carbide burrs, you have the safe end tapered burr and then you have the endo access burr or endo Z burr. I will speak about this burr in detail in the next upcoming slides. So, uh, where exactly to start with? Uh, in, uh, you generally start with a round burr, uh, but uh, where to start with? So, in case of a maxillary molar, you take mesiobuccal cusp tip, the mesiolingual cusp tip and then uh, in a line approximating the buccal groove. In between uh, these two lines, you have somewhere the point X. And in case of mandibular molars, you have the uh, line drawing the buccal and the lingual grooves and one more the same as the maxillary molar the mesiobuccal cusp tip and the mesiolingual cusp tip. So uh, in between these two points uh, you mark somewhere x and you start preparing your tooth structure at this point x. You will start with a round burr, go deep and then at some point of time you will feel a free fall into the pulp chamber. So once you reach your pulp chamber your burr just dips into the pulp chamber. So once you feel this you take a DG16 explorer, search for canals and if you find uh, or if you uh, if you know that you have entered the pulp chamber then you shift the burr into safe and tapered or the endo G burr. The, in this case they are using a diamond burr with a safe end but uh, ideally I would suggest uh, using this endo Z or endo axis burr. So this has very good cutting efficiency. You, you can refine your walls of the canal uh, within very short span of time using this burr. And at, at the same time, this has this safe tip. So why is this safe tip very much needed? So once you enter the pulp chamber, 
the floor of uh, the pulp chamber is very important and critical uh, and you should never damage if you have a cutting tip for your burr then you might e even end up perforating the pulpal floor which is not at all good this endoseba you get in three different sizes the 21 mm the 25 mm and the 28 mm and then uh, the working length or the cutting length uh, would be around uh, 9 mm in 21 mm burr and this would be around 10 to 11 mm and uh, the diameter at the tip would be somewhere around 0 0.9 mm roughly around 1 mm so you know how much is the size of the burr so once you open your pulp chamber you don't have a clear diagrammatic picture as you see in a textbook you'll have something like this a pool of blood coming from the pulp or, or the canals so in order to control this uh, bleeding you need to use to use cotton pellet soaked in sodium hypochlorite and apply pressure so that it will control the hemorrhage and you can have a clear vision so this is mouse hole effect uh, you know that the canals are uh, placed at the junction of the wall and floor of the pulp chamber we will discuss in detail about cleaning and shaping in the next session so uh, here are some advances uh, in the access cavity preparation uh, the traditional endo access cavity preparation compromises a lot of tooth structure and in most of the cases because once there is a removal of the pulpal tissue and there is compromise of uh, fractural strength so we suggest uh, we suggest crowns to almost all the posterior teeth and even the anteriors too the advancements we there are many other endo access cavities proposed uh, these include the first one is the traditional endo access cavity preparation that we have discussed today and the second one is the conservative access cavity preparation the third is also conservative but you can see the walls are divergent over here whereas here they converge and uh, the, here you can clearly see the pulp horns are left behind without removal but in these cases with uh, with new irrigation techniques where irrigation is uh, too good that it will disinfect all the pulpal tissue it's fine uh, there has been good prognosis in these uh, type of endo access cavity preparations too and uh, this is ultra access cavity preparation where uh, the amount of uh, uh, enamel or the dentin that you cut is very minimal and uh, truss access cavity preparation you create two different uh, access cavities and caries access cavity preparation where caries direct the preparation of the endo cavity and the resto access cavity preparation where the restorations previous restorations are removed and these direct the endo cavity preparations i did not discuss in detail regarding these things but i have given a brief idea on these cavity preparations so coming to some clinical tips you always need to have a diagnostic radiograph and you need to remove your dentinal overhangs over the orifice but for better straight line access and you need to have well prepared chamber before radicular preparation and it must never be aimed down the canal which will lead to subcutaneous emphysema always use negative pressure or use paper points for drying or cleaning the canal uh, the main point of the access opening is to give a direct access to the apical foramen and not merely to the canal orifice. So complete cleaning of the canal can be done accurately. So uh, here are the references. Uh, I end this session. Uh, I want to keep all the videos short and informative so that uh, it doesn't eat up your time. Uh, if you want anything in detail uh, in endodontics in specific, do mention in the comments below. Uh, we'll put up as soon as possible.